Welcome, everybody, to a special edition of the Powerbomb Nation. I'm your host, Dwight Couch, and today we have a special interview. This is an unaired episode of Powerbomb Nation. It was with the one and only Mr. Steve Wilson. Some of you might know him by the ring name Osiris. Others will know him as the amazing Congo Kong. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, before Steve found his way into TNA, he found his way to the Powerbomb Nation studios. And a little funny uh, side note to this, his debut match was against none other than fellow Powerbomb Nation alumni, Chris Silvio. And uh, so go back and check out that one. It was a uh, great debut for, for Congo Kong and TNA. He's had a glorified career, a great run. You might be able to catch him out your back door this summer as he is all over the United States, everywhere from Indiana in August to Dallas. So you're going to find him right out your back door. I suggest if you see him on the card, run out and grab some tickets immediately. Uh, but go ahead and take a listen to our interview with the one and only Steve Wilson, a.k.a. Congo Kong. All right, Powerbomb Nation, it's my pleasure to welcome the next guest. You're all going to be very, very excited. He is the man behind Congo Kong. Please welcome to Powerbomb Nation our newest member, Steve Wilson. Steve, how are you doing, my man? Not too bad. Uh, can't complain. All is well. How are you guys doing? Oh, we're doing great here. You know, uh, beautiful weather outside, so we're never going to complain. Great wrestling on TV, great wrestling out your back door. So, so nothing, nothing to really complain about. Life's good. Good. So now, um, Steve, how, how long have you been in the professional wrestling business? I've been wrestling for 18 years. It'll be 19 in October. 19 so um what what first got you started in professional wrestling what was your moment where this is this is what i got to do i guess since i was young uh, my dad says i've always wanted to be whole hogan since i was four or five and um you know it's just always been um i guess in me to want to uh grapple I guess and so I used to beat up my cousins and the neighborhood kids and um, all sorts of stuff in our in our front yard we weren't really backyard wrestlers but um, I was constantly in trouble for rough housing um, and just as I grew up I guess it never really went away absolutely now, now you're you're a pretty big man uh, what, what do they bill you in as they bill me as damn near 400 pounds and damn near seven feet tall, but I'm actually 6'6", six, six, um, 320 right now. Um, you know, that's down from actually being 400 pounds, but, uh, you know, it's good to keep the, the illusion, I guess. Absolutely. Um, so, so now tell me, were, were you always were you always a bigger kid in school? Did you play a lot of football, or were you one of the intimidating guys? Yeah, um, I I played football since I was in eighth grade, and uh, ended up getting two different scholarships. Actually, uh, one to a place called Saginaw Valley State University of Michigan, and then one to uh, University of Saint Francis here in uh, Saginaw. Or I'm sorry, in, in uh, Fort Wayne uh, later on. Um, yeah, I guess I. I I probably looked intimidating, but you know, people usually knew that I wasn't. Um, I was the guy. I was the jock that hung out with the nerds. So you know, I guess my group of nerds, nobody ever really messed with. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the the protector of the group. 
Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. So now, uh, tell me now. You mentioned Hulk Hogan being a big influence since you were a little kid, and you know we're we're within days apart as far as age goes. So this is really cool because a lot of the guys I get on the show, you know, it's a much younger group now. So you know they're talking about Austin as their first wrestler they've seen and things like this. Uh, so who who were your other favorites back in the day? Uh, long list: Andre the Giant, uh, Undertaker, Vader. Uh, Cactus Jack, Sting, Warrior, um, Arn Anderson. Um, I guess well, Arn Anderson was was more after I I uh, learned to appreciate the art of wrestling. I guess um, most of the big guys, Earthquake, Typhoon, you know those guys, Bam Bam Bigelow. Like I was always drawn to them because I always figured I'd be, you know, in that role. I guess of a super heavyweight. Right, yeah, I, I used to love Earthquake and Typhoon were, were one of my favorite tag teams. Oh, yeah. So now um, so now tell me, so we are in the WrestleMania season and, and all that good stuff. Do you, do you have a favorite WrestleMania moment growing up? Anything that really stands out to you? Uh, besides Hogan slamming Andre, um, I guess one of my favorite matches of all time that I was reminded of uh, was Kurt Angle versus Brock Lesnar. Just, I don't know, that was like the first match that I recall having like a, a ridiculous amount of false finishes and like it was so good because you really didn't know which way it was going. Right, and uh, that's the one where uh, I believe that's the one where Lesnar hits the or tries to hit the uh, flip from the top rope and, and winds up missing and Angle gets the pin. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, Brock won, but uh, he did uh, miss the uh, shooting star press. But the fact that that dude could do a shooting star press was amazing. Right, yeah, he's he's a big dude to be coming off the ropes like that. Any t- we, we ever get to see you going to do anything like that soon? Uh, I don't know about a shooting star press, but uh, you can watch me do a moonsault. <laughs> <laughs> this thing's do that all over the place. So now, um, what what got you into the professional wrestling business as far as where did you get your start? Um, I trained in, starting in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and then later uh, we moved over to Holland, Michigan, which is about 25 minutes away from Grand Rapids. Um, and it started on an off-summer, actually the summer after my uh, first year at Saginaw Valley State University. Um where I went to a video game store and saw a poster for a local show, which uh, uh, at the bottom asked if, uh, you know, do you want to be a pro wrestler? Call this number. So I called the number to check it out. And um, that was pretty much you know, the end story, I guess. Once I was in, I was in. And so now you said you, you've been wrestling since since the late 90s. That, that would be accurate. Since 1998, yes, since, sir. Since 98. So now, where are uh, some of the most unique places that you've that you've gotten to wrestle at? I'm sure you've seen some some really strange strange uh, venues. Yes, yeah, to say the least. Uh, I've wrestled in bars and uh, uh, campgrounds and um, skating rinks and churches and. Um, uh, baseball stadiums, yes. There's, there's a quite quite the long list of uh, odd places, I guess you say, uh, for me to wrestle. Movie theaters, um, those are always fun because you get the crowd on one side of the ring, and you know you 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 have to be careful how you do things because you have, you always have to remember that there's an audience there, so. Um, and to make sure that you're uh, playing to them and not, you know, ended up looking at a wall. <laughs> right. So now, uh, tell us, is, is there anyone in particular that over your career that you've just really enjoyed working with or someone that feels that you two get the best out of each other? Um, guy by the name of Hillbilly Judd. Um, kind of funny how uh, we coming to each other's lives um he uh 
came up to a place called Extreme Wrestling Federation uh, where I was wrestling as champ. And um, he, uh, we wrestled each other. And I had to convince the promoter I wanted to wrestle this guy and, you know, see, see what this was like because I knew he had, you know, great ability for being a big guy. Um, you know, we probably weighed about the same, but he was about a foot shorter. He was about a foot shorter. And he could do, you know, all the things that I can do or at the time even wanted to. And just, you know, our matches were just, they are just good, really good. You know, to watch two big guys like that go in and fly around and toss each other around and do the things that we did. It was a fun time. Absolutely. Now, um, I noticed, man, you're no stranger to gold whatsoever. You have held a a ton of championships in, in your time. Yeah, yeah. I've been pretty fortunate there. Uh, you know, always being the, the guy that, you know, a company looks looks up to and I, I that's a it's a a big I guess compliment to me um, and I I don't take it lightly you know I, I appreciate it and you know because to me a, a, a champion should be the guy who um, either your fans are the most loved by or the most hated by um, or he's just the guy that, that, you know, you want representing your company as your champion regardless, you know, and, and to me, that's nothing light. It's not a prop. Like some people say, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a badge, you know, you, you should wear it with pride, in my opinion. Absolutely. Now, uh, I did notice you wrestled for the uh, Juggalo Championship Wrestling. Now, now, are you still, I was a little unclear, do you still perform for them? I do. Uh, I kind of have to. I'm their champion. That's 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 why I was picked up there. What's it What's it like performing in front of that crowd? Because that's a uh, that's an entirely different scene. Yeah, um, it's gotten so much better over the years. You know, we went from uh, being doused in Fago and God knows what. Else, excuse me, whatever else they felt like throwing at the time. Um, to now, they are way more appreciative of the work that we put in um and i guess depending on where i am they either love me or they hate me or you know something i don't know it's it, it's kind of a weird situation with them but um you know it's still still a place that i enjoy going and and uh being a part of absolutely and now of course you know we're no stranger to you you've been you've been on our tv before um you know with impact wrestling you've done you do a lot of work with global force wrestling what's what's it like getting to work with somebody like jeff jarrett i mean because you're you're in the same because you grew up i'm sure at one point watching double j on the tv on monday nights oh yeah yeah it's it's uh it's uh it's a good situation. It's awesome. I love Jeff, um, you know, and I, I am, I'm grateful that he loves me, um, you know, and he sees, see things in me that some people, you know, they, they probably could see, but they, they didn't believe it, I guess. And I feel like he believes in me. He, he, he wants to put me in a place for me to succeed. I, I do love that about him. Um, and I think it's awesome, you know, the fact that I, like you said, got to watch him growing up, and now I get to work side by side with him, you know, and and um, you know, just just having the matches that we've had and, and uh, uh, the experiences that we we've, we've had, you know, it, it's an it's an amazing thing, I guess. Absolutely, I, I'm sure there's there's lots to be learned anytime you're around uh, Jeff Jarrett. Correct. So now, uh, who's who's been some of the biggest influences on your career so far? Um, you mean as far as like shaping the character of Kamu Khan? Uh, no, just you. I guess probably you as overall as a, perf- a performer. Okay. Um, I would say Vader and Undertaker, and uh, mainly those two. You know, I, I try to take a little bit from everybody and, and mix it in. 
to where it's not so recognizable, you know, that uh, I look like I'm just a, a carbon copy of any one person, you know what I mean? Right. So now uh, let me ask you this, since you, since you bring up The Undertaker, any thoughts on uh, on The Undertaker at this stage in his career? Um, I still love to watch him. You know, sometimes it's, it's, it's how do I put it, a little painful because I know he's not uh, The Undertaker that was. But, you know, in my mind, he's still the man. And if I were ever lucky enough to receive that phone call that said, hey, we wanted, we want you to wrestle Undertaker at WrestleMania or anywhere, you know, that would be like the ultimate goal. And I probably, I probably not smile or not stop smiling the entire time. Right, yeah, that, that that would be one that would be absolutely. I couldn't imagine standing in that ring at re, or any event and and having the lights go out and you hear that you know that gong hit. Yeah, yeah, I'd probably probably be pissing myself and crying and laughing and smiling all at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so now, uh, you've worked. What was it like working? You had a manager, you know, Truth Martini was your manager at one point. Was What was it like working with him? He always seemed like a very unique character to me. Uh, yeah, Truth is uh, very unique in and out of the ring. Uh, you know, uh, I didn't really, I guess, get to hang around him personally, but, you know, spending time in the back. It's just a, a different kind of guy. Like, he's so mellow and relaxed and, like, uh, just I don't know. He's just such a cool guy. Like he's he's a lot of fun to be around, and uh, uh, I hate that we didn't get to have a longer you know working relationship. But um, you know he he ended up getting a call up to ROH, and uh, you know all things worked for him, and that was that's that's good. So now um, where where can we see you? Where where are we going to be able to see Congo Kong in action? Do you got any any upcoming dates or anything we should be on the lookout for? Uh, yeah, this Saturday. Um, well, <laughs> this is not airing until uh, until after WrestleMania, uh, April 9th, Heroes and Legends. You can check me out there in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Uh, I'll be facing Ryback for the Heroes and Legends Heavyweight Championship. Um, and then uh, keep a lookout on uh, Thursday nights uh, on uh, Pop TV for the Impact Zone. It's in, uh, in when and where you'll see Tongo Tong on this. I haven't made my debut just yet, but um, it's coming. Very good. We'll look very much forward to uh, to seeing you on our TV. Now, I, w- I want to switch gears for just a few minutes here. What um, what what are some of Steve Wilson's guilty pleasures? What are some of the things that you enjoy doing when it's when it's time off from the gym? You know, you don't have a match scheduled and you're just relaxing at home. What would it be like hanging out for the day? Um, if I've got absolutely nothing to do, you'll probably catch me. Uh, either at a movie theater or playing a game of college football on my Xbox 360 because um, I don't know, I'm that guy. I'm, I haven't found a reason to update my gaming system yet. Um, maybe when they start making the uh, college football games for the new gaming systems, I might might go ahead and update it. But you'll catch me doing that or, or sleeping because uh, that's a rarity too. Um, or, you know, Making wrestling gear. All right. So now, um, so now you're a big college football fan. I'm assuming who's who's your favorite team? Michigan State Spartans. All right. Not bad. I was I was thinking you were going to go with Michigan Wolverines, and I was going to cringe just a little bit there. <laughs> <laughs> like it's a yeah. It's like I like to see them do it. Well, against everyone else but Michigan State. So, yeah, I guess I'm kind of a fan of Michigan, State, of Michigan Wolverine. But, um, yeah, Michigan State has been my team. Uh, I used to spend my summers in Lansing, so we were always, you know, around the, 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 the stadium. That was one of the, the, the teams that 
I, I wanted to get a scholarship for, and I was close to it, but uh, some other things had happened, and they ended up losing some scholarships uh, right around the same year I was recruited. Um, so I didn't get to go there, but, um, you know, they're still still my favorite team, still um, – We'll uh, book off of a show if uh, an opportunity to go to a game to go to a game comes up. So, very good, awesome. You know, down here in the in the Bluegrass State, we're we're more into the college basketball just because the program's always been a little better. Uh, but are you our football programs coming around? You know, we signed Stoops to a two year contract, so hopefully we'll be competing a little more than we typically do. Oh yeah, I love watching Louisville football. Yeah, I've Louis, actually play, Louisville's, Louisville's got an excellent squad. I've actually played a game in uh, Commonwealth Stadium. Uh, it was just a junior varsity game, but um, still, like, we were under the lights, and it was, uh, it was like, very memorable, you know, being in a place that big and, and playing the, the University of Kentucky uh, JV squad, you know, the guys that will be on their, their main roster in, you know, one to two years. Absolutely, yeah. There's, there's nothing. Everybody, we all bleed blue down here, and and we will pack Commonwealth Stadium. It's a, it's a great place to watch a, watch a game at. Oh yeah. So now, uh, now, are you watching uh, the NCAA? Have you, have you been keeping up with that? The, well, as far as basketball, yeah. Basketball has never really been uh, my thing. It's always been my dad's thing, my uncle's thing, and everybody else around me. But uh, during basketball season, I was always wrestling, so um, I never really paid attention to it. Do you, do you have any picks in the in the uh, Final Four bracket? Uh, is Michigan State still in it? No, no, unfortunately not. I, I, I was hoping they would go a little further. Now, well, uh, I don't know. I, don't, I have no clue who is even in it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. I right, just a couple more questions here for you, Steve, and I'll let you off of here. What's your favorite movie? Favorite movie is The Color Purple. The color that is an excellent movie. Oh yeah. Timeless. And um so now now let Power Bomb Nation know where can they uh follow you on social media, do you get YouTube channels, anything? Where can we absorb Anything from the, the man that is Congo Kong? Well, um, I guess I have a YouTube channel, but I don't really post very many videos. But I'm sure if you go on there and you type in Congo Kong, you'll see quite a few videos because, like I said, I've been around for a while and a lot of people um, will post matches um, and that sort of thing. Uh, if you want to follow me or try to add me on Facebook, uh, you can reach me under Steve Wilson or Congo Kong. Um, I have pages for both. Uh, if you want to catch me at Twitter, my Twitter is at Real Congo Kong. Um, my Instagram is Congo Osiris seven eight, or maybe seven eight seven eight. I'm not sure. Um, that's a lot of stuff to remember. But yeah, <laughs> uh, if you need wrestling gear, you you're more than welcome to hit me up at either one of those or at Juggernaut Gear by Osiris on Facebook. All right. Well, we definitely appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to join us here on Powerbomb Nation. And uh, hopefully one day we'll get to talk to you soon. And we definitely look forward to uh, checking out every Thursday night and seeing, you know, who might just pop up on our TV screen there. And uh, thank you so much again, Steve. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate you guys even thinking of me.